Hey guys, Nate and Scott here with PlayYourCourt.com and today we're gonna to show you how to hit the drop shot. All right guys, so today we're talking about drop shots. This video is for players with a player court rating of 50 to 70. If you're not in our community or familiar with our rating system, that is the equivalent of about a USTA 3.0 to 4.0. So Nate, talk to me here. Drop shots, we all know what they are, but I think I know in a lot of my coaching sessions, I see a lot of people doing this the wrong way. So talk to me here, what, what, what are we gonna fix? What's... Yeah, we see a lot of drop shots these days, don't you? Uh, Matt, Matt, Mats Fielender recently said he thought it was the plague of the tennis tour, that there's just too many of them. Um, and the drop shot is this great weapon. The problem is that a lot of players out there are panicking and using it in the wrong circumstances. So before we tell you about uh, really about how to hit the drop shot, let's talk about when to hit the drop shot. I like it. All right, so one, on a clay court, it's going to be 10 times more useful than it is on a hard court, simply because less of the surface. Bounce, yeah. yeah, less bounce, right? All right, number two, you want to be inside the baseline. You need to be at least three or four, maybe even six feet. The closer you get to the net, it's going to be easier for you to hit. If you're behind the baseline, stop trying to hit drop shots. They're yeah, not the useful. Huge misconception, I think, is you can hit a drop shot from anywhere on the court. The further you are away from the net, don't forget the longer your opponent has to see that you're hitting a drop shot and run that correct. ball down. So I agree completely. Yeah, correct. All right, and so the, the last thing that we're gonna talk about that we want you to be mindful of is most of you are trying to do too much with the motion on your drop shot. We see a lot of big motions where you're getting more of this sidewinder. Occasionally one lands and you get excited, but you're not really controlling the ball. The drop shot is supposed to be controlled. It's, it's a touch a, shot. Yeah. Not so much swing, not so much chop, more touch and feel. All right, and so what we're gonna talk about is assuming that you know how to hit your slice, right? Because if you don't know how to hit a slice, it may not be time quite yet to start getting into the drop shot. And that's why we're starting at a player court 50, right? I mean, players below that don't have a reliable slice and don't really understand this yet, so. That's right. Cool. So with the, whether it's a forehand or backhand, what we're really gonna put some focus on is working more under the ball, all right? So where before we'd really go more on a 45 and we would work down and let that racket finish all the way on a straight line. Here it's gonna work a little bit more like the inside of a spoon, so that when I hit the ball, I'm gonna leave the racket face open. Kind of cupping it a little I'm bit. Cupping it a little bit, yeah. And that's where the feel is coming on this stroke. All right, and so the other thing that we wanna talk about is, is actually the footwork that's involved with this particular shot. So guys, what we're talking about with the footwork here is really the same footwork that we find on the volley. When I'm working on a drop shot, you're noticing the rocket head is nice and high, and there needs to be a little disguise here, right? So that I want them thinking, maybe I'm gonna slice it deep. I'm gonna take my right foot and I'm gonna offset and load on that knee. And as I make the motion to hit the drop shot, remember like the inside of a spoon, I'm gonna work towards my left foot. All right, so for a righty, it's right, left. So it's a weight transfer with a cup simultaneously. Yeah, because cool. we want a little bit of this weight transfer working towards the ball. That's big. I see so few of my students line up their feet correctly to actually execute this, and they wonder why they can't hit a drop shot. They're not in position to do it correctly. Right, and we see a lot of people drop shotting where they're like trying to get low with the ball and hit it, and it's just there's no real leverage behind that. So we're in the back end, exact same thing on the other side. I'm gonna take my left foot, I'm gonna offset it, I'm gonna get a nice knee bend, and I'm gonna work under the ball on this weight transfer. All right, so Very Scott, cool. help us, if I'm, if I'm just, if I cannot get the feel, I've got too much slicey dicey, what else could I possibly do, maybe with my grips to help? Yeah, especially on the backhand side. So, For sure. right out of the gates, take it easy, internet trolls. This is a drill, this is not where we want you to land, but what Nate, I think, and I would both recommend, if you have a hard time getting a feel on your backhand side for this drop shot with that continental grip, which is what ultimately we do want you using, shift over to an Eastern grip, and in other videos we've talked about grips, but, um, Shift over to that Eastern grip. It's gonna lock in that position that we really want the angle of your racket face to create the type of motion we're looking for on this drop shot. So on your backhand side, with that continental grip, if you just feel lost or if you feel too flimsy and you just feel like the ball's all over the place, shift over to that Eastern grip to really lock in and get the feel for what the angle we're trying to create is. Once you get good at it, of course, again, switch back to that continental grip. Yeah, it's good stuff. So we're gonna show you a couple games now that actually work on the feel that you need for a drop shot. And I don't know, many of you out there have probably noticed 
You see these kids before their clinics and their lessons, and they're playing all these games close to the net. There is a reason kids develop soft hands and feel a little bit earlier than adults. What do, you, what do we see adults do? You grab, you grab your, your tennis racket and a couple, couple tennis balls, and you both head back to the baseline. You just start welling away. So you're swinging through the ball. Kids are starting up here at the net and they're developing soft touch by playing these little orchestrated games that really work on this. So whether you're just trying to figure this out or you're an advanced player, you can look on YouTube or anywhere else and see Fed and Nadal and Novak, all these guys playing these games. Start playing these games to work on the feel so you can start developing a drop shot. Yeah, great warm up and also an easy way to just really focus on the touch pieces that I think so many coaches maybe neglect, right? Yeah. Cool. All right, you want to hit a couple? Let's do it. Let's go. All right, guys, so you can see we're right up here on the net, and this game, we call it the touch game. All right, so the rules are pretty simple. We can't hit outside of the service boxes, and at no point can we volley and take the ball in the air. The point is going to start with the ball on the net. On the net. You want to serve? Uh, yeah, I'll start us off. All right, game on. Oh, my. <laughs> I remember my first time it's playing a fault. tennis. You get two. It's a fault. It's what I get for trying to be so nice. Oh, the ultimate, oh my goodness. Okay, this is just getting rude. I thought we were being nice. This is me being nice, buddy. Yeah, that's me being nice. <sighs> All right, not a bad shot, Scotty. Um, might have called that out if the camera was not focused. Can't lie in front of the camera. No, I can't. So we're going to show you a second game, and this is called mini tennis, and it's not your traditional mini tennis. This version of this game was actually voted by USPTA over several hundred teaching pros. They looked at all the drills and lessons you can do, um, and, and this is what was voted number one, the most important drill that they felt like every For tennis touch player. Or totally. Just totally. Wow. Numero one. I'm right? excited. Yep. So the way this is played, Scott and I are both going to go back to the service line. And it's going to be played like normal t mini tennis. We can't play in the alley. All right, can't if we volley, hit in the net, probably, right? can't volley. But this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we're typically playing with the continental grip, playing with some backspin. But the ball, in order for it to be a winner, would have to have the ability to bounce tw twice in the service box. If the second bounce hold was on, to go hold up. Hold on, I'm so confused. So the ball bounces in the service box, but then the second bounce is in the alley. That's out. I've lost the point. Ooh. Because I haven't, I, I haven't produced enough spin, and therefore not enough touch on this ball, right? So therefore, like the drop shot really wouldn't be all that effective, right? So we want the More ability. About touch and placement. Yeah, we want that ability to play up high a little bit and get that ball to just kind of come to a stop once it hits the ground. And this isn't necessarily done with just. A, 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 I know I said spin. Um, but it's not excessive spin. I mean, you can kind of block with the continental grip and it's going to create the spin because the continental grip is the magic trick. the back spin, yeah. Yep. So what are we working on? Court awareness. Where are you at in the court? All right. If the second bounce is going to be out, let it go. The guy's lost the point. All right. The other thing we're working on is feel and touch. So we'll show you what a couple points uh, playing this mini tennis game, what it looks like. We'll do that now. Let's battle. Let's get it. Oh, this could take some time. Oh. Ooh. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> You're about to. Oh, oh I should have let, let it go. I should have let it go. You were losing the point. Oh. That's mine. All right, Nate, I guess you got your revenge there. Go ahead and, uh, and bring us home here. What's, what's the takeaway yeah, from this? Yeah. Other than that, I guess you're reasonably decent at ultimate touch and All that good mini stuff. tennis. Yeah. yeah. So guys, in summation, what are we focused on here? With the drop shot, remember, you want to be in the court, not behind the baseline, okay? Let's try not to make this shot too good, all right? Less is more here. We want to play with some height with several feet up above the net. Don't try to thread the needle and focus more on the stroke being compact with a little bit of a spoon shape to the stroke as opposed to these big cuts that we see putting sidewinder spin on the ball. And at the very, at the very least, get out and just try some of these games. It's so hard to start incorporating drop shots into your games when you're initiating play from the baseline like most of us do. Scott and I do this for fitness. This is a really good game 
you can see it can extend for quite some time, but it's gonna help you start utilizing that feel, making your drop shot a whole lot better. I think the drop shot too, correct me if I'm wrong here, is one of the few strokes where we actually can just sort of throw you in the deep end here in one of these games and let you get the feel for it on your own. There's not a whole lot of, yeah. you don't wanna go take lessons on this or, or getting on the ball machine for this, I guess could be helpful, but it's not necessary. Practice a couple of these games, you'll figure out the feel for this drop shot. It's not as hard as you might think. And guys, you know Nate and I here at Player Court just want to see you improve your game, but the bottom line is we don't know a ton about you. The stuff we went over today is definitely for a very specific skill level. We want to learn more about you and give you instruction that you need. So do us a favor, click the button or the link below, answer some questions for us. We can then send you custom video coaching based on your specific skill level and the things that you need to work on. So just click the button or the link below and Nate and I will do the rest.